Welcome conscious beings and welcome to Conscious Patterns. Today we're going to be looking at the top five reasons why you're having so much trouble finding your type. So let's try to understand that. Let's try to understand why you are having trouble seeing your conscious patterns. Let's get started. perspective. Now, this is a big one that I see a lot of people do in discussions and forums, coming in to ask people to help them discern their type. And they'll come in saying, I, I think I'm either an INFJ or an INFP. And they'll start listing behaviors and things that they're doing. The thing is, that is way too broad to try to help somebody find their type. These are two different types, two different cognitive function sets, so whenever we're trying to ask between these two things, there's so much involved to be able to try to understand the cognitive functions somebody's using. So it's too far back. We need to, you know, I'll go ahead and put a dollar in the analogy jar. So it's, it's like trying to understand what ingredients we're seeing and using when we're trying to look at the fully made stew that somebody is actively stirring. It's how am I supposed to find the ingredients? How am I supposed to find the cognitive functions you're using when we're given way too broad a definition, way too broad of a scope that I can't really see anything. We're not looking at any details. And so you have to be able to look at those details to try to find what is the cognitive function that I'm seeing. And if we ask, am I an INFJ or an INFP, we're already, we're already missing the detail because you may not be either one of those types. So we need to start with the finer detail and, and stop trying to find something that's so broad and so big. The other thing with perspective that I see is besides being pulled too far back is we see people who have gone way too deep and they're trying to ask very deep questions that are we're, we're not really ready for. And, you know, some of them have some philosophical debate to them. So they might come in and say, I'm trying to find my type and I think I'm using TE Trickster. And that is way too in depth. We're trying to find a dominant cognitive function and an inferior cognitive function and trying to understand the the main type that you're you're falling into, your main preferences. So whenever we go into trickster functions and shadows and demons and all these other things, we're, we're going way too deep. And that's what we want to try to find is we want to try to find that balance. We want to try and look at the detail of the first four cognitive functions, the dominant cognitive function and the inferior cognitive function. Going too deep, you'll get lost in a rabbit hole. Being too far back and looking too broadly you won't be asking the right questions. So it's important to be able to have the right perspective and ask the right questions so you can look at the detail that's gonna help you find your type. Number four, changing type. Now I see a lot of people who believe that you can change type or they believe they're changing type all the time. Now, I did make a video about that. You can watch that on why that's likely not the case for you or for I or for most people. So you can watch that. But what I wanna say is, if you believe that you change type all the time, then really there's nothing in the cognitive function theory and understanding since if you believe you can change type all the time, then there's really nothing to understand because that's not what the theory is. The theory is not that you change type all the time. So you're searching in the wrong place if you believe that's the case. And the other issue that that causes is that people will believe that they're trying to hit a moving target. They see a moment of feeling or a moment in their life where they were very feeling and they go, hey, that's me. 
And then they see another moment where they're very logical and go, hey, that's me too. And pretty soon you're, you're all over the place. And now you can't narrow down because you're open to anything can be everything. So you're getting lost. You're getting lost on so many different trails that you're not able to focus on what's happening, on what the details are. So uh, I do believe, like I said, you can watch the video I made, you can come to your own conclusion, but if you are going to believe that you're hitting a moving target, then you'll never be able to find your type, which leads me to number three. The biggest issue that I see is that people want to believe that they can do everything and that they're equally as good at everything. You know, and part of thinking that we do everything has to do with ego, has to do with us not being willing to look at those inferior functions. And that's usually where I find the most benefit is trying to, whenever I've tried to help somebody find their type is to help lead them through seeing those weak areas because that's the hardest to see. That's the most and the most difficult for us to admit. And I'll say whenever I found out I was an INFJ and I started looking at the cognitive functions, it was really it was really eye opening to me to see SE inferior and realize what that was and go, wow, I I never really understood how much I struggle with that. I never understood how much I I have felt like, well, that's something that happens to me instead of understanding, well, that happens to you because you don't look at it. You keep trying to avoid it. You keep thinking that you can NI your way out of it and, and plan for everything so that you don't have to deal with it. And then when it happens, it feels like, well, the universe just made this happen to me and it always does this. And of course, that's not, not the case. These things happen to everybody. The problem is not everybody is like me and trying to control and make sure that doesn't happen. But the problem is, is if I'm not willing to look at that inferior and look at those weaknesses, I'm never gonna be able to find my type or verify my type. And that's the big thing. If you think you do everything equally well and anything that happens that is, you know, people or drama or these processes keep springing up at me out of nowhere, if you believe that's the case and you don't own any of that uh, and your ego is kind of keeping you from owning any of that, then you'll never be able to find your type because you'll never be able to say, wow, look, here it is. Here's my extroverted thinking inferior. And yeah, you know, it causes me all sorts of problems and I avoid it. And I, I really rebel against, you know, hearing other people's opinions and, you know, accepting that maybe I'm, I'm not right to do this or feel this way. And so unless you can look at those things, but if you say, no, I do that, I trust me. I, yeah, I'm FI dominant, but I also listen to the logic of everybody and I, I welcome it. I, I think it's great. Uh, and I have never have any problem with it. And if I do, well, it's their fault. It's their problem. That's the thing with thinking that we do everything and it really keeps us from being able to find our type and being able to look at those weak areas uh, in those areas where we have trouble and that's how you're going to find your type not believing that you can do everything but that requires looking in depth which leads me to number two and in number two we're going to be talking about age it's it's very difficult it is very difficult for somebody who is younger to find their type. Now, it can be done. Um, it just takes more work. And the reason is, it isn't because they, you know, yes, you're still developing cognitively throughout your life, all these kinds of things. That's not the issue. So the issue is that age gives you experiences. And those experiences help you see like we said in the third one, help you see where you fail, help you see where you have trouble, help you see where you are weak. And there's just not a lot of life experiences yet to really be able to get to that part in your life where 
you see so clearly and go, wow, yep, you know what, that is me. I have trouble dealing with people or I have trouble dealing with these processes. And it, it really, people have to hit that brick wall many times in their life. They have to really, truly fail. They have to really, truly suffer. And whenever you're in your, um, you know, say early 20s or you're in your teens, it's not to say that there hasn't been real suffering in your life and that you haven't gone through uh, anything. You might have had a much worse life than somebody who's and, and suffered more than somebody who's in their 40s. Uh, they've never had the trials that you've had. It's not about that. It's about understanding in that suffering where you have failed. And that's what takes time and experience because it's just a matter of going through that process and being able to go, you know what, this is where I failed. This is where I was the problem. And I can see that now. And it takes a long time to accept. It takes, it takes a lifetime. And that's where a lot of people come through, say, in that, you know, like we said, in that kind of midlife, that later 30s, early 40s, and say, I, I'm so done with, with believing that I can get through my life this way, and I now see that's causing me problems, and I need to look at these areas that I've devalued, that I haven't looked at, and accept that, you know what? maybe I'm weak in those areas and I need to be better. And so that comes with age, that comes with failure, that comes with suffering. And you have to learn that about yourself. And, you know, in your early 20s, you just haven't had the time to really understand that inner, those inner workings of yourself and your, your life and gone through, you know, those trials and tribulations that you, you go through throughout your adult life. There's a lot of things in your teen life, but there's a difference when you're out on your own, you're raising your own family, paying your own bills, you know, moving your way up the, the work ladder. Those are all very different. You know, how you interact with the tribe, how you manage your life. And those are the failures, those areas where you suffer those are really going to help you understand where you fail and what you need to get better at. But those areas will also help you see those cognitive functions more defined. So it's a much different process when I ask somebody who's in their, you know, mid forties or, or later in life about things, they, they can really come to certain conclusions more definitively than say somebody who's in their early twenties who can't really recognize that as easily. It certainly can be done. Finding your type at a younger age can definitely be done, but it's just much harder. So your age is going to be a wall that you're gonna to have to get over to find your type compared to somebody who's older. But now I wanna talk about the number one reason that you can't find your type. The number one reason that you can't see your conscious patterns clearly. And the number one reason you're having so much trouble finding your type, the number one reason why you are having so much trouble seeing your conscious patterns is, and you're not gonna like it, you haven't learned the cognitive functions. I know, I know, I get it. You're saying, hold on, I, you know what, I'm going to forums and discussions, I'm, I'm watching YouTube channels, I'm trying to understand and everybody keeps saying, go learn the cognitive functions. So why are they saying that? They're saying that because first of all, you're doing five through two that we just talked about and they can see that. But the bigger reason is, is that you are, you haven't done the hard work and you're probably not going to. So everything that they say, they know is gonna be lost in translation or that you will disregard anyway because if you haven't put in the time to learn the cognitive functions, then how are we going to have a discussion that you'll be able to understand fully and believe? And that's the thing is you won't believe it 
and you'll never believe it because you'll say, well, hold on, it could be this, it could be that because you haven't learned the cognitive functions and so you're not able to have that deeper discussion. Now, does that mean that you can't try to have uh, get typed by somebody else, that you can't find somebody to help you find your cognitive functions and find your type? No, that's not what that's saying. Now, that person should be helping uh, teach you and lead you through why those are your cognitive functions and really be able to pinpoint that. And usually whenever people are wanting to be typed and they're serious about it, they'll take the time and they'll uh, meet with somebody who says, we, we need, this is gonna take a little bit of time. There's some steps we have to go through, checks and balances. And they'll, they'll go through that process with them and, and teach them about what they're seeing and why that is telling us that those are your cognitive functions. But not everybody does that. And so if you don't know your, the cognitive functions and you haven't taken the time to learn them, and somebody's, you know, says, hey, go ahead and talk and I'll listen. And they go, you know what, I think I'm hearing FE. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, I'm hearing a lot of FE. You're probably an ESFJ. And the thing is, is that if you don't know what the cognitive functions are, you just go, oh, okay, well, then I guess I'm an ESFJ. Um, and the thing is, is because you don't know the cognitive functions, you'll never truly believe that. You'll never truly be able to grasp onto it and say, oh yeah, because I know the cognitive functions, I understand what they were talking about. I understand how they can see that. I can have a discussion. I can have a debate. I can ask questions. And whenever they respond to me, I can understand what we're talking about fundamentally to have that deeper discussion so that I can discern what my cognitive functions are. But if you aren't doing that, if you haven't learned those things, then they're really, and, and you don't have somebody who's helping you through that process of seeing your functions and teaching you about those, then you'll never believe them. And you'll always walk away from every person who helps type you and say, you know what, I think I could be a different type. I might've got that wrong. You know, let me try something else. Let me take another test. And you just keep going and you just keep going in this circle going, I could be a different type. I could be and because you haven't taken the time to learn the cognitive functions and to be able to understand what you're seeing. And when you understand the cognitive functions, you can say, when somebody, again, if somebody's trying to help you type yourself and help you see those, when they say, hey, I'm seeing a lot of uh, introverted intuition and here's why, you, knowing the cognitive functions, will be able to say, okay, I do think that makes sense, I understand that, but you know what I'm not seeing in myself is inferior SE. I'm not, I don't really come across that in my life, or could you help me see where that is tripping me up in my life? I'm, because I, I should be able to see that yin-yang relationship of NI dominant and SE inferior. And from our discussion, could you help me understand where you're seeing the SE inferior? And again, if they can't answer that, then well, maybe they don't know what they're talking about. But by you learning about it, you can ask those questions and you can get information back to help you see that information, whether that's true or not. So you have to learn the cognitive functions and there's no easy way out of it. There's no shortcuts. You have to read books. You have to go read you know, psychological types, at least chapter 10. And, and listen to Carl Jung, uh, you know, or read Carl Jung and see what he had to say and try to understand the, the fundamentals of where this started and how the theory started so that you can have a better understanding and you can have better discussions and you can more clearly define what you believe you're seeing in your cognitive functions and what your type is. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that gave you something to think about and hopefully gave you some tools that you can use to help you get closer to finding your type and stop making some of those bigger mistakes that are preventing you from getting closer. I appreciate you stopping by. And if you appreciate the time and effort it takes to make these videos, please give it a, a like and a subscribe and you know, all the thumb loves and all that other kind of stuff. I really do appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.